Tammy here from the Process Programming and about to teach you how to get your first pull up. Believe it or not, before I started doing strength training, I didn't have a pull up either. So this is my journey of how I got my first pull up and hopefully it'll help you get yours. I used to think that just trying to do pull ups all the time was the thing that was gonna get me pull ups, but actually in reality, what I needed to do was strengthen my lats. So let's talk about how. Okay. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is take you through some cable lat rows and cable pull downs and just speak about how to isolate the mat lat and use it as much as possible. So when we're setting up on our lat pulls, what you are gonna think about is placing your feet nice and tight in here. Ideally, we're using a neutral grip. If it's not the mag grip, not a problem. Something that is just neutral. It could be one like this. Either way, what we're gonna do is we are going to pull ourselves out. Think about a deadlift position where we lean ourselves forward slightly with a nice flat back. And now I'm gonna lengthen out the lat squeeze my elbows in line with my body. If I go further than this, I will now incorporate my rhomboids, my traps, and my rear delts. So instead, elbows tucked in, and then I'm gonna go from trolling it in. Pulling, holding, controlling in. Pulling, holding, controlling in. Now, I want to get as much time under tension as possible so that I could really develop a lot of strength through this portion just here. So again, I'm gonna be taking you now through a lap pull down. Okay, so for the setup position, again, I've gone with a neutral grip position. I'm gonna tuck my knees underneath. This time, tight tummy, pulling my elbows down again, just to in line with my body, and then reaching up. Now at the top, I don't need to lengthen out all the way. I'm just gonna be going to this position here, squeezing, holding, and again, trying to get as much time under tension as possible. The goal of all of this, or what I'm trying to teach you, is that there are a thousand ways to skin the cat. If you don't have access to something like a cable machine, we can start to look at using dumbbells. Okie dokie. So, I'm not gonna take you through every single lat uh, focus movement possible, but I will show you just two more if you were to just have access to dumbbells. We could do something like a modified seal row, where we have our chest on the bench, and again, lat focus, so squeezing nice and tight, Elbows in line with the body, driving it down. Same positions, now just a different piece of equipment. Same thing applies to a three-point stance row. We can go knee on the bench, you can go off to the side, but whatever option you choose, again, squeezing nice and tight, holding, and then controlling down. So the whole intention here is you can utilize whatever movement makes sense for you, whatever you have access to in your gym or at your house to make sure that we are getting nice and strong through the lats. After we've developed enough lat strength, we're gonna start to work on a bar. So let's go over. Um, we will start with two spotted eccentrics. So the easiest version, and this is gonna be level one, is for people who can't quite hold all of their body weight for an eccentric or a negative pull-up. So what you'll do is a toe spotted pull-up. Now don't just think about standing on a box and using your legs as much as possible. We're actually just using it for support and using it when we need it rather than trying to stand against it. So what it looks like is this. We're gonna start with a supinated position, super supinated. I think about carrying a bowl of soup, okay? So my palms are gonna face towards me. Hands are gonna wrap around the bar. I'm gonna set up with my toes just slightly in front and I'm gonna go onto my tiptoes like this. So I'm gonna hold at the top and then I'm gonna think about controlling down for anywhere for six to eight seconds. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, Five, I'm hardly using my legs. Seven and eight. Now you notice that I controlled it through the entire range of motion. There was no point where I just let myself drop. What I'm actually thinking about doing, especially if we don't have a pull-up just yet, it's not just a case of trying to slow yourself down. You're almost thinking about trying to pull yourself up. Because if we think about gravity, it's working against us. So you're thinking about pulling on the bar, but naturally gravity is gonna be taking you down. Make this as hard as possible. If you are accumulating these sets, they are strength sets. That means you're not gonna be able to do a thousand reps. Instead, focus on anywhere from one up to three with a nice slow eccentric controlled portion and think about resting about two to two and a half minutes between your sets. You could always start with three sets as you progress through your weeks. We need to make it a little bit harder so you can go a little bit slower. We can add slightly more volume. Maybe you're adding another set. So instead of three sets, we're doing four sets. Maybe you started with one rep and now you can do two. So these are all different ways that you can progress. So 
Okay. So level two, you have now exhausted your toe spotted or you are someone who didn't need the toe spotted and we're moving straight to level two where you can actually hold our body weight and control the eccentric. Now we're gonna start again, supinated position. Remember holding that bowl of soup. Palms are gonna face towards you, thinking about holding at the top here. Nice, tight, hollow body position. Slowly down, thinking about pulling yourself up. But naturally, that gravity is gonna take you down until you get all the way to straight arms. Once you get to straight, just jump yourself down, reset, and then we're gonna go again. And think of it like a cluster. So you're gonna do one rep, probably gonna rest anywhere from five, maybe even to 20 seconds, and then you're gonna go again. Think about this again being strength sets. We need to rest quite a long time between our sets. Also, bear in mind, as you progress through your sets, you're gonna get more fatigued and it's gonna get harder. So if you need to stretch out the rest periods so you can get good quality sets in, not a problem at all. It's like I've done this before. The next level, if we can, is gonna be to add a little backpack. Now the backpack, doesn't have to be a backpack. There are multiple ways that we can attach weights. So what I'm gonna do is just show you with some bands. Sorry, about to grab it. The thickness of band actually is gonna be very dependent on how heavy the weight is because essentially what I'm gonna do is put a little weights plate on the back of it and wear it on my back. So if it's heavier, we don't wanna be using this super skinny one because it's gonna bounce around everywhere. So I normally go for like a moderate thickness which kind of covers any weight. All right. So the way this is gonna work now is I just loop my band through the hole and I'm gonna place it on my back. Now, if we think about body weight, if your body weight is already heavy, we're not gonna put a ton of weight on. Start small and build from there, okay? Same thing as what we would normally do with normal strength training. So we're gonna go over to the bar and we'll show you what it looks like. In terms of the execution, nothing changes. You're now gonna be just stepping yourself off the box in your supinated position, holding nice and tight, and slowly controlling yourself all the way down until you get to your straight arms. If you can complete your sets, let's just say it was we're accumulating three reps in that set, and you can control it from anywhere from six to 10 seconds with the weight that you have on your back, then you could look to increase it. So depending on the type of pull-up you want, some people want a pronated pull-up, some people might want a supinated pull-up. If you're not too fussy, I would start supinated. We get to incorporate, uh, I guess, just more muscle groups. We get to incorporate the biceps. We also get, get to incorporate our pecs a little bit more. So you will feel stronger in that position. But if you are someone who's wanting to get that pronated pull-up, start with the supinated progressions. And once you've exhausted those options that I've already shown you, you will then move into the exact same things, but in a pronated position. Now, if you spent enough time developing the supinated, you should be able to go straight into the pronated into your eccentrics, but you might need to do it without weight first and then use the same idea and the same principles of adding the backpack and adding a little bit more load. So a lot of the time we have people come in the gym and they expect their pull up to happen within like an eight week cycle. For some of us, okay, maybe it might happen depending on your training age. If you have someone who's done quite a bit of strength training leading into it, um, you probably have the prerequisite lack of strength from doing some other movements. But if you are not that, or your training age is quite low, you've not been in a gym or done resistance training much, we can't expect to just jump up and be able to pull ourselves up. For some people, it might take us 12 weeks. For some people, it might take us a year, two years, three years. And if that is you, the main thing that I would say for you is to trust the process. There will be periods in which you feel quite stagnant in your progression, but trust me, if you show up consistently and keep doing these things, you will eventually get that first pull up. And as someone who didn't have it, the reward of being able to get it from working hard and being consistent beats anything. So something to make note of, like I said before, is that the pull up progressions and the pull up journey does take quite a bit of time. Don't feel frustrated in yourself if you're not getting it straight away. The main thing that you are doing is taking a step towards being able to do it and you should be really proud of accomplishing that. This is something that will be extremely rewarding when you do get it. So like I was saying before, definitely lean into discomfort, keep trusting the process and even in those times where it feels stagnant, I promise you what you're doing counts. I hope that you guys found this informative video helpful. If you do have any questions in terms of programming, how to progress, or if you do get to that point of feeling stagnant and you just need a little bit of support, comment below.